good morning. Welcome to Homewood Church, where we've gathered on this, the 18th Sunday after Pentecost, to worship Jesus, to learn more about what he has called us to do in the world around us, and to encourage one another with the gospel. Before we get started, I do want to call your attention to the announcements that are printed in the worship guide. Please take note of all the things that are taking place here in the church. Uh, I do want to remind everyone next Sunday uh, will be a day where we celebrate the life of Miss uh, Max McElmore, um, who uh, passed away a couple Sundays ago. And, uh, we were planning to have her 100th birthday party on the 29th, uh, but instead we will just be celebrating her life together on the 29th. Uh, we will have church service as normal next uh, Sunday morning, and then following uh, worship, we will go over to the fellowship hall and fireside room uh, where we will have a lunch together, and we will actually have uh, a time of sharing and remembering Miss Max, um, and so we will be doing that over in, in the building. There will be family and friends here uh, helping us celebrate Miss Max, so that's going to be next Sunday. Yes, sir? That's right. We will have barbecue and baked beans, and uh, you are all invited to bring uh, a dish, uh, finger food, something to share. Uh, that would be something that would uh, be very much appreciated. Uh, and so if you have any questions, you can see Miss Judy. Uh, you can, I call you uh, lovingly the Judys. Uh, Miss Judy Noggle and uh, Miss Judy Wallace, you can see them and they can, they can help you uh, in that. Um, the last thing I want to share before I turn this over to Miss Melissa is that on uh, Saturday, October 19th, we will be participating in a service project at Pepper Place uh, that is hosted and the service project is hosted by the Society of St. Andrew. It is the food cleaning ministry that is here uh, at the church. Um, the project will be at Pepper Place from 11 to 1. And basically what you will be doing is helping them collect any food items that are left from the farmer's market where farmers are going to be donating to Society of St. Andrew. We'll be collecting and organizing that uh, th those uh those foods. So if you have uh, any questions about that, you can see me. There's a, a way for you to sign up online. I will just get you connected with that website. It's, it's on our, um, uh, the weekly email that I send out. There's a link uh, that you can sign up there. Uh, but that will be on Saturday, October 19th from 11 to 1. With all that said, I want to invite Ms. Melissa, if you were to come forward this morning with our children's message.
I want to invite everyone to stand as we are called to worship at this time from 2 Corinthians 8 and Philippians 1. Uh, anywhere in the text or in the worship guide where you see bolded and italicized text, you are invited to add your voice with mine uh, at that time. Friends, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich for our sake, he became poor, so that by his poverty we might become rich. Therefore, it is our prayer that our love may abound more and more, that we may approve what is excellent and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us pray. Mighty God, as we gather here in this place on this day, we, we come and we seek from you peace and grace and wisdom. Lord, we do thank you for the beautiful day that you have given us. And I pray that as we are here, that we may be able to celebrate uh, the beauty of your creation. And how, Lord, you have caused each and every one of us, Lord, to, to understand who you are and to know that, that you are sovereign in our lives. God, help us this day worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father God, be pleased uh, in our time here today. For we love you and thank you and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We begin worship this morning with singing hymn 210, verses 1 and 4 of Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, let us now pray together. Eternal God, our Judge and Redeemer, we confess that we have tried to hide from you, for we have done wrong. We have lived for ourselves and apart from you. We have turned from our neighbors and refused to bear the 
burdens of others. We have ignored the pain of the world and passed by the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed. In your great mercy, forgive our sins and free us from selfishness, that we may choose your will and obey your commandments. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Living God, we remember the grace you have poured out upon us, and we trust in the future you have promised us. We are yours through the gift of our baptism. You wash us with grace. You anoint us with promise. You feed us with mercy. You fill us with joy. We are risen to new life in Christ, forgiven sinners and beloved children of the covenant. Brothers and sisters, this day, believe the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. These words from Jesus uh, in the Gospel of Matthew are much needed words to us, and especially much needed words to the disciples uh, in, this, in this part of the story of the Gospel. Uh, it's needed for us because we have just finished our series through Lamentations, where we uh, have gone through that book of Lamentations and we saw and heard the story of God's people uh, who were uh, closed-minded, hard-hearted. They heard the word of the Lord to repent. They did not repent. Uh, they ended up in captivity and experienced great tragedy. But last week, we understood that God was always um, still with his people. He was still present with those people. And we heard from Ezekiel last week about the valley of the dry bones and how, how the Lord uh, looks upon Ezekiel and tells him to, to call out for the bones to come together. And then he speaks to the wind and the wind fills the lungs of the, the great nation of Israel there. And we see that there is hope. We see that regardless of our circumstances, whatever it is that we think is too much for us to bear, that the Lord God has his purpose and his plan. Uh, we heard last week uh, from Ezekiel's mouth that when the Lord says he's going to do something, he does it. Here we have Jesus in the Gospels talking to his disciples. He is he is. Uh, in chapter 10 of Matthew, he has called his 12 disciples to him and he sent them out to do uh, their preaching work, to go out and to, uh, and to preach and proclaim the gospel. And they do that and then Jesus gives them uh, a lesson about persecution. He gives them a lesson about how there's going to be times in their life that when they're following what the Lord has told them to do, that it's, it's not going to, to go all the way swimmingly with them through all situations just because you are working on behalf of the living God and, and you're going to preach the good news of the gospel uh, Jesus tells his disciples you don't need to expect that everybody's going to be excited to hear the message they're not going to listen uh, oftentimes um, and in fact they're going to be angry with you and that this anger can and uh, impacts so many relationships he even tells them in Matthew chapter 10 that that this gospel that this message that Jesus is giving them to share is actually not only going to split apart like communities uh, and friendships but it can actually cause friction and strife within families which doesn't seem to be something that I would be all the way excited about getting involved in right <laughs> It is good news, the gospel. It is good news that, that we have to share, but to hear Jesus talk about all of these things that could come our way, persecution and division and strife. And then at the beginning of <clears throat> chapter 11, we hear about John the Baptist, who is uh, in prison. He is in prison for calling out the king, and John is worried that, uh, hey, you know, I was the one that came and proclaimed the, your way, your path. Um, are you the Messiah? He wants to make sure that Jesus is mine. He still believes he's the Messiah, but he's like, oh, should I be waiting for someone else? Or are you the one? Mainly probably because, as we all, you know, John wasn't all that excited about being in prison uh, for calling out uh, the authorities there for his sinfulness. And we all know what befalls um, John the Baptist. All of that comes to, leads us to where we are this morning when Jesus pronounces woes to unrepentant cities and when he gives this wonderful, wonderful invitation of peace. We need to hear these, these words. We need to hear this voice because oftentimes in our lives, we don't anticipate the storms that we have coming our way much like uh, Melissa shared this morning, like having a plan. 
Sometimes our best plans, they don't come to fruition. But all we want to do is be able to, to come to terms, maybe, with, with the plan of what is going to happen about where we're going to go next. And sometimes in our lives, there are those seasons where it looks like everything is going to work out well, but then things begin to, to chip away, fall away. These storms that come to us that maybe we, we don't necessarily want to uh, embark upon, those, those storms that we don't quite understand why we are in the positions that we are in. And we need to hear this voice from the Lord that tells us to come to Him, especially when times are difficult. Now, what is interesting before Jesus gives this uh, this message of comfort, this message of peace, Jesus actually tells us uh, about the unrepentant sins and the woes that he gives. It sounds very similar in a lot of ways to kind of what God had been calling out to the people of Israel uh, in the time of Lamentations. Jesus uh, is that same type of prophet, just much like Jeremiah was the weeping prophet calling out for uh, God's people to repent uh, and they did not repent and they received judgment because of their unwillingness to repent. Jesus here is, is, is calling out to the people of God and these people of God have seen within the, these cities, these great cities, they have seen the work of Jesus. They had seen people get healed. They had seen people forgiven of their sins. They had seen people uh, who were possessed by demons, that those demons had been expelled. They had seen great works. They had heard Jesus' preaching. And in Jesus' preaching, they have a choice to make. We do live in a day and time where everybody thinks they know what Jesus preaches. But the, the underlying message of Jesus' preaching, the very first sermon that Jesus preaches, actually, he says one word, repent. Repentance is the foundational message of Jesus' sermons. <clears throat> Repentance. Being able to know and understand your situations and where you are. Repentance is us, and we, we, we journey through understanding what repentance is, but repentance is uh, it's, it's about us understanding that our life, we've been walking away from God each and every day. And when we hear the term repent, when we hear Jesus say repent, what that is is an invitation for us to turn away from the, 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 the ways of death in the world and to return to God. Repentance is us turning away from ourselves and refocusing back on the living God and then making our way back toward Him. That is what God and what Christ has called us to. Each and every one of us have responded to that. If you say that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, let me tell you, that is a wonderful first proof that you have begun a road of repentance. It doesn't mean that you uh, have completed the road of repentance, but it means that you are on that journey of repentance. Because when we say that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and when we, we follow Him, when we are concerned with what it is that He has called us to do, and we follow Him that way, that is, that is the path of repentance. So I will say to you this morning, if you say Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, you have begun the road to repentance. You are walking a path. You are walking a path where you understand and know that there are things that have happened in your life. There are failures that you have. There are times of, of sin where you have been, uh, been afflicted by sin. You have, you've been hurt by people. You've been one hurting people. But you've come to that point to understand that that very sin, the, those things of, um, that, that have caused pain and caused suffering and made life difficult for us, that those things, that we have looked upon those things and we have realized the error of our ways. 
And we know that we can't live life alone and do things on our own. And so we trust Jesus. We trust Jesus. Jesus tells about these cities who are not trusting in him. Cities that he has done a great deal of work and miracles in, but yet they don't pay attention. This should be very familiar to us, by the way. Jesus is just recounting to Chorazin and Bethsaida and Capernaum. He's just recounting to them the history of Israel, right? How many times in the Old Testament do we read about Israel and God doing great and mighty things for them, and then within a matter of weeks, they have forgotten what good things God had done for them? And, and, and have gotten angry with him. After the Exodus, we see the people of God forget uh, that God led them out of slavery and captivity. And they fashion a golden calf and worship it. We hear them complaining in the wilderness. We hear them grumbling about why did God take us out of a land of slavery only to, to kill us in the wilderness. life of faith is one that oftentimes we have to come back with that assurance of faith. Jesus is telling these cities where, again, he has done great and mighty things. And he was doing great and mighty things in those cities, not for those just individual moments. Yes, Jesus had concern and compassion for those that he healed. But their physical healing was not the the, the end game of what Jesus was doing. What Jesus was doing was showing the people of God that there is hope and that there are new beginnings. And that those new beginnings are to, are to pave a way for us to be able to share just as John the Baptist did and to, and to call attention to who Jesus is so that in our lives, because God has done things for us, because he loves us, we are then able to help connect others into that same story. The life of repentance is a, is a life that is lived publicly. When God does mighty things in your life, you are to give God thanks for those great things that he has done. But you're also to give testimony to what God has done in your life. And you're to give testimony and wherever you find yourself, with whoever you find yourself in it, it, it actually kind of helps us understand our life, which I think is where I want us to, to kind of focus in on here as we hear what Jesus says in the midst of all of this repentance, in the midst of all of these storms that he is talking into, Jesus tells his disciples, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When Jesus says, come to me, he is, he is asking for your whole self. The rest that we receive from Jesus is a rest of understanding. The thing that causes most of us probably the most anxiety in our life is the question, why? Why am I here? Why am I going through what it is that I'm going through? Why do these things seem to happen here? That's a huge point of anxiety. Young people are probably have that question too. Why am I alive? Like that, that first understanding of, hey, I'm alive. Why? Jesus tells us when he says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, that why is for him. It's because of Jesus. Why are we alive? It's because of Jesus. And he calls us to take upon ourselves his yoke and learn from him. If we could answer that question, why, and look into well, this is Jesus, and Jesus tells me this is the why that I'm alive. Doesn't that help us understand our situations just a little bit better? 
If we ask that question, why did I get sick? Y'all know 10, 12, however many years ago it was, I had pneumonia, was in the hospital for uh, about a week, had surgery, uh, uh, was out of the pulpit for almost a month. Why did that happen to me? Well, as I look back on it and as I think about it, and even at that time, the why was I was able to meet and talk to doctors and nurses and encourage them with the gospel. I was able to understand the fear and the trepidation that comes from people who are sick and going into the hospital. Those, you know, when all of you call me to say, hey, Pastor Derek, I'm going to have surgery this week. I'd like you to come. Uh, God put me in the same bed, right? He put me in that bed so I could understand the fears, the, the worries, the concerns. So I have no, I have no doubt in my mind. Why did I get sick? Why did I have to go through that time in my life? It was so that I could learn more about what Jesus has called me to do. It was so I could encourage people that uh, I normally wouldn't be able to encourage. I would be able to understand life a little better. I do have anxiety. I do have to, uh, you know, I, I have a doctor that I would talk to. And when I talk to the doc, he'll say, hey, how are you doing? How's your anxiety? And it's been good. It's been good. Thanks be to God. But I've often wondered, why do I have to battle anxiety? Especially me as a pastor. Doesn't that say something about how deficient my prayer life is? No. What it does is it helps me understand the world in which I live. When, when folks in our church are having times of anxiety, you know what? I can do when I come up to you and I put my arm around you and I say, hey, I know exactly what you're going through. Hopefully you know. He knows. I've gone through and battled panic attacks. I've had those storms in my life. I know how frightening and scary they are. And much like Paul would do uh, in Corinthians, asking God to take this thorn from my flesh, what I've learned from all of those things is my grace is sufficient for you. When Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, he's saying, take upon you this yoke. Because did Jesus walk away from pain and suffering in this world? No, he, he embraced it. He took it upon himself so that we would have that way back to the Father. This rest after the storm that we receive in Jesus is one that is solely rooted in Him. So friends, as you are on your paths of repentance, as you are going through times of difficulty, as you spend moments in your life trying to figure out and understand the whys of things that are happening to you, know that the Lord Jesus has an answer to that question. Know that the Lord Jesus is leading and guiding you on that path of repentance. Know that the Lord Jesus, who has taken it upon himself to ensure that we have a path back to the Father has done so and has invited you to join Him on that same journey. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Friends, I invite you to stand as we continue in worship this day with the singing of hymn number 52, verses 1 and 4 of Blessed Be the Name.
guide and take note of all of the names that are listed there. Um, we want to remember the family of Glenda Goad. This is Stephanie uh, Otz's mother who passed away a couple uh, weeks ago and uh, her funeral will be this Tuesday. So we want to uh, be with that family as they um, lay to rest their loved one. Uh, we also, I'd like to add a, a name to our prayer list, the name of Dale DeSell. Uh, Dale is uh, Diane Salmon's uh, younger brother. Um, he is uh, on hospice in Florida, and uh, so uh, the family is, is, is going through a time of waiting. Um, and so we want to pray for Dale and pray for his wife, Carol, uh, and pray for their daughter, Mandy. Uh, as uh, they go through this, this time um, of grieving and waiting. Uh, and be with Diane and please remember her in your prayers and, and Cindy as the, uh, this is a, a beloved brother and a beloved uncle. Uh, will you join me as we now go to the Lord in a time of prayer? Mighty God, we do thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for the grace that you give us. We thank you, Lord God, for how you um, have caused each and every one of us to hear the word of the gospel and how you have called each and every one of us into a life of repentance and how, Lord, you join us on our road of repentance and you lead us right back to God the Father. Lord, we... Thank you for the lives that you've given us, and we thank you for each individual that you have placed in our lives. And God, you have connected us together, and you have made it possible for us to, to love and to be loved. And so, Lord, as we lift up to you all of our brothers and sisters who are upon our prayer list, our brothers and sisters who are upon our hearts, we ask, Lord God, that you would give your grace to each one um, in accordance with your will. The God, that you would give grace to those uh, and give peace to those who are suffering. The Lord, that you would help those who are grieving. That Lord, that you would give discernment to those who are searching. Lord, that you would give companionship to those who are vulnerable. Father God, I pray that you would continue to use us in our lives and help us answer that question. Why do I have to go to this place or that? Help us answer that question by understanding that you have called us to you so that we can call others to yourself. Lord, we love you, we thank you. We ask all this in Jesus' name, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us now worship God with giving tithes and offerings. <laughs>
this day and for all that you do for us. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would bless these tithes and offerings and use them to better your kingdom here on earth. And Father God, be glorified in our lives as we serve you. For we do ask this in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. We conclude worship this morning with the singing of hymn number 391, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Thank you.